Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the first lecture of linear algebra through this series of lectures you will be introduced to all the basics and uh, important aspects of linear algebra especially for machine learning and data science you will uh, learn about vectors and also about multivariable calculus starting from very basics and uh, gradually moving up to some advanced level okay okay so let's start by asking the most basic question what is a vector and uh, a vector is really just two pieces of information direction and length or what is also called as magnitude it's two different words but uh, for the same thing okay now length is a physical concept you know it's uh, something we can see it's uh, something we can measure yeah while direction is our orientation and uh, it's a very visual thing so um, so vectors to begin with most intuitively fit on a graph they fit in a place where we can visualize them and uh, so how could we attempt to capture direction and length both as well okay so let's think of an arrow it does a pretty good job in this case for instance because it uh, captures the direction it's uh, moving let's say in the south west direction and it also clearly has a certain length and so this is a vector and that's uh, exactly how we graph vectors just as an arrows pointing to a certain direction having a certain length so this instances shows how exactly we graph a vector okay having a certain length a certain direction this is also a vector because it has a certain direction pointing towards it also has a certain length so as this yeah is this a vector yes even though it doesn't start at the origin but it is pointing towards certain direction yeah and it also has certain length similarly this is also a vector pointing towards a certain direction having a certain length so it is true that vectors need not be start at the origin they can start anywhere just like this one okay so all these instances shows how we conceptualize vectors okay that's great now uh, let's look at a specific example here so we consider a vector say alpha uh, and uh, i am going to put an arrow over the top of it to make it sure that we know that uh, this is a vector okay well i am not uh, going to write this like this uh, i am not going to say that alpha is equal to this arrow yeah that's uh, too ambiguous yeah i need uh, something more definite uh, with a well structure that this vector moves over a certain amount in the x direction let's say for example it moves over 3 in the negative x direction and it also moves a certain amount down in the y direction let's say for example it moves uh, down 5 okay well now i can say that this vector is equal to its uh, components okay so there's a new word for us right now so it's equal to its uh, x component which is uh, 3 how much it moves over an x direction and its uh, y component which is 5 uh, which is how much it moves down 
Now, anyone in the world looking at this vector alpha equal to minus 3 minus 5, one can easily go ahead and draw that vector if they want. It is because uh, they know exactly which vector we are talking about, you know. When we write that, uh, just a bit of notation here. Apart from that, this can also be written as a column format and, uh, and it's exactly the same information carrying but it is just a vertical now and uh, again this is still the x component and this one is still the y component, okay. Okay, now let's uh, look at another example. Let's say the vector beta and uh, let's say it has the components uh, 4, 6. Well, that simply moves means we are moving over 4 along positive x-axis. And up uh, 6 along positive y-axis. And of course, we could have written this as a column vector, which is uh, 4, 6. So, we have expressed the vector. Now, the principal question is, what about the direction and length? Does this piece of information capture the direction and length? Well, it tells us direction because this is the vector that moves 4 along x-axis and 6 along y-axis. That's its direction. It points in this direction. But what about length? Well, we can find the length of beta equal 4, 6. But before we do that, uh, let's just get some notation out uh, of the way when we are talking about the length of a vector, we write this double bars around it almost like a double absolute value around the vector and uh, now this is read the length of beta okay so going back to our vector beta we have its x component is 4 and its uh, y component is 6 so that simply means we are moving over 4 in the positive x direction and up 6 in the positive y direction and now we have formed a right angle triangle and it turns out that the length of this vector is just the hypotenuse of this triangle yeah and so therefore we can just use the Pythagorean theorem uh, the length of beta squared is equal to the base squared plus the height squared. So, 4 square plus 6 squared. So, this is a direct application of the Pythagorean theorem and uh, if we just take the square root of both sides that the length of beta is equal to the square root of uh, 4 squared plus 6 squared which uh, simplifies to the square root of uh, 52 and it's uh, really just as simple as that all we are doing when we are finding the length of a vector is finding the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle using the Pythagorean theorem okay let's look another example so we consider minus 2 5 now what is the direction of this vector well we have moved over 2 in the negative x direction and up 5 in the positive y direction now we are going to find the length of this vector using the Pythagorean theorem so we will just 
compute the height square and base square. And in this case, we know that our base is 2 along negative x axis and height is 5 along positive y axis. Therefore, applying Pythagorean's theorem, we obtain the length of this vector. This equals square root of minus 2 square plus 5 square. Okay. Which simplifying, we obtain square root of 29. Yeah. Okay. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts, please let me know. Till then, see you in next video. Bye.